far as Cole Island, you know, it was found out that the that the, that the, that the Confederacy were planning to abandon it anyway or whatnot. You know what I mean? And so because they because the Union strategic, strategically knew where everything was at, that's when they decided to attack on like a week later, exactly on May twentieth, and they were successful and they ended up taking um, uh, Cole Island, which turned out a, a a strategic spot because the inlet of the Stone Old River was like right there into the Charleston Harbor or whatnot. And they kept that, that, that Island coal Island throughout the rest of the civil war or whatever. And then like other batteries or factions and men and locations and places like that, they were all killed and they, they were taken it. They, they all were defeated basically. So, <laughs> uh, even just before that, going back to this very same day, <laughs> as far as, uh, Frederick Hickel, he communicated to his superior, to his commander, actually. And that's when the guy E.G. Perry comes up. He explained everything that, like, all, all of the supplies that they had on board, uh, the ship, uh, Robert Smalls, the man had a contraband, all of this. And they basically, like, you know, they gave Robert Smalls in particular a lot of props. So that guy ended up explaining it to his commander as far as E.G. Perry. He ended up expl- explaining everything. He wrote to, he, to, he wrote to his commander, a guy by the name of Samuel Francis DuPont, right? He was at Port Royal at this point. And he basically just reconveyed everything that uh, Frederick Hickel had said. But he also added that this guy, Robert Smalls, was like very fucking intelligent. Like, like he was very bold and intelligent. And basically like the information that he yielded and the supplies he brought was fucking invaluable, basically. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you're talking about... It's hard to put that shit in words. Like, <laughs> like it was a big fucking convenience. You know what I'm saying? The intel that he brought. And the way he did it was so fucking slick. You know what I'm saying? And, of course, extremely dangerous. Like I mentioned already, it's, it's like that should be, like, commonsensical. They would have gotten caught. They would have got killed. Think about what how, how what that resulted in. You know what I'm saying? Like, it resulted in the union ended up taking a strategic spot or whatnot and keeping it all the way throughout the, the rest of the Civil War or whatever. And that's just one example. As far as Samuel uh, Francis Duport, I wanted to make sure that this part was true because he, because when this was explained to him, that's when he wrote to the Secretary of the Navy at the time. This guy's name was Gideon Wells. And he also conveyed the same thing. He felt like uh, Robert Smalls was very intelligent. That's what he said. Because they had to extract, they had a piece of the letter that I read. He said, this guy, Robert Smalls, is extremely intelligent. He's like the most intelligent man that I've seen come across these lines. Now, the re- it's, it's a couple of reasons why I wanted to read the letter in full. Of course, because I wanted to just read the whole letter for myself. Because I feel like, you know, if I read the whole letter, there's probably other interesting things in it. Also, that's number one. And then number two, I wanted to make sure that it wasn't exaggerated at all. So when, when I tried to find, like, the actual letter from this um, flag, this Navy flag commander, you know, I couldn't find it. But it brought me to other things that made me say, okay, yeah, he's probably telling the truth. Because uh, online, you know, me searching through. Oh, damn, I thought somebody was behind me. Be searching through uh, articles and shit. I came across an article that had like a compilation of all the letters that he wrote. I still didn't see the one about Robert Smalls, but I don't think it's like, you know, false because I just, when I went through this particular article, I thought it was pretty rich when they did this compilation of letters. So I spent a great deal going through it, but then I uh, stopped because it was one particular portion that I read. And this is like after, this is like later on in the year to where uh, <coughs> Samuel Francis DuPont was complaining like complaining about another guy named Daw. I can't remember his the whole name, but I just remember, remember like the first three letters, I believe. D A H. And he was trying to say like this guy was complaining because this guy wanted his position. But he felt like this dude, again, another person right here. This is <laughs> it reminds me of John Adams when he's complaining about uh uh Benjamin Franklin when he first went to Europe. He was basically saying this guy was motherfucking like he didn't work as hard as them, but he also felt like he was disease minded. You know what I'm saying? So and even though this is post, way post uh, May the 13th, I felt like, okay, if this guy in particular said this guy that Robert Smalls was the most intelligent that came across the lines, it's probably true. The only other question is I wanted to know, was he just talking about like uh, 
was he including soldiers in general or was he only talking about country band? Because he did refer to him as a, a country band, <coughs> a country band or whatever. So anyway, so that happened, right? So just like uh 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 uh, uh oh my god uh uh, uh anyway just like other people for example he became very um John Brown John Brown just like John Brown after the Harper's Ferry raid even before that actually uh you know he became popular as far as Robert Brown newspapers in the north started writing about him and his name was brought up in the confederate papers too but you know based on what i read they didn't mention anything about him being scolded of course you know that's part of the thing but they were more so talking about how those three confederate soldiers was being scolded people wanted them severely punished for that you know again you're talking about losing strategic positions and also even though like even though like uh port port uh <coughs> not port but um uh, even though that particular island, you know, saying it was already going to uh, abandon it, but it was like everything else around that island as well, including like the ammunitions that Robert Smalls had brought and all this type of stuff. So it was like a, a, a big ass loss. Like it's it's almost like you think about it like this to make it simple. Say you got two thousand. You just, you just got a you got a um you got your taxes right. Say you got like five a five thousand dollar check or some shit. You set your wallet down. Just briefly, like, just real, like, like, not even necessarily randomly. You know how, like, you're smoking a cigarette? You might sit your cigarette down for a second. You, it's, it's not like that you're not paying attention. But you sit your shit down, two seconds later, it's gone. The feeling that you get, you know what I'm saying? You got $5,000 that's stolen out your shit. You know what I'm saying? It, so take that and then times that shit by, like, a thousand or some shit. You know what I'm saying? And then the uh, domino effect of that. That's why they wanted those... uh three confederate soldiers punished and they did get punished but two of them <coughs> ended up getting their sentences overturned now again based on what i read i don't know which two uh or which one didn't get punished probably the captain and the other two probably got punished and then they got their shit overturned so that's what happened so after robert smalls became very popular he received what they call prize money okay because at this time okay prize money was basically like any type of uh, uh, ship that was a part of the Confederacy or any state that had rebelled, if you had captured their ship or their goods, commodities, etc., you be you would be awarded a certain amount. Now, going back to the eight hundred dollars, which it would have costed for Robert Smalls to pay for his family's freedom, and how it would have took decades for him to achieve that, nigga. Not only did he take a huge choice and put everybody's life in danger, in fucking imminent danger, basically imminent danger. Prob let's say probable danger. So some some more than likely you're gonna get caught and get killed. But luckily it didn't happen, right? Now he gained his freedom. That's a big ass weight off your shoulders. Now you good forever. It's not like you, it's not like uh, the 1850s or something, and you living in Ohio or whatever other state or territory actually following the uh, 1850 compromise to where like damn i can't eat with a shit all right you know what i'm saying the, the underground railroad started the year before this but if i get caught anywhere else they still gonna send my ass back even if i'm in uh cast michigan or some shit you know what i'm saying even though a lot of people rebelled there it was like nah you still got you still unsafe to an extent you still can't really sleep completely innocently because any asshole could try to find out who the fuck you are or report you to the authorities and they may ship you back anything can happen that weight was off his shoulder. Yet, at the same time, as far as his prize money, him and all those guys got awarded. <laughs> and him by himself. All right? This is only in 1862. Him by himself got awarded $1,500. And that wasn't even the end of a pension that he received. He got awarded $1,500, right? And then a, a part of his popularity, now his name is through the loop people start inviting him to places. So kind of like uh, Robert Anderson, exactly a week later after um, Fort Sumter, when he was invited to go to New York and uh, damn. Oh, okay, good. A few more seconds. When he's invited to go to New York and to what Union Square Park or whatever for the celebration that took place April 19th, similar to this guy right here. Only thing is, as far as uh, 
the flag ca- uh, captain uh, or 